Welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Joining me today is April Austin with the Caldwell Senior Center. Welcome, April. Good afternoon. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. And we're going to talk about everything you have going on in January. It's the start of the new year. You've got some new activities. We do. We're going to kick off 2022 with a bang. It's going to take me a long time to get used to saying that. <laughs> I, yeah, because I'm still stuck in like 2020 or something. <laughs> Although no one wants to be stuck in 2020. Let's, let's be honest. I think we all feel like we've lost a few years. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully 2022 will be better. And you've got lots of fun things going on. We do. Including something that I think is extremely important for seniors. Yes. One of our favorite things, and we have not done an in-person class in a really long time with Tai Chi or Tai Chi for Falls and Arthritis. We have another Tai Chi class that we're still going to keep in the evenings, but we are going to do Tai Chi for Fall Arthritis and Fall Prevention starting um, in January. It's going to be the first Tuesday in January, and it's going to run for 20 weeks. So this is a 20-week program. We ask people to kind of commit to sticking with it for 20 weeks because that's it's an evidence-based program. So that's where we've decided you really get the most benefit out of the program, and we want everybody to try to attend at least 16 of those 20 sessions. So that's our, that's our goal. Obviously, things happen, and that may not be the case that everybody can, and we may have weather and have to reschedule. But it's part of the um, Tai Chi for Health Institute programs, and it's, it is evidence-based. It's proven. Um, I'm going to be the instructor for that class. So we really love Tai Chi. I have a lot of people who have done my class over and over and over, and it's very good for balance. It's very good for stress relief. Um, it's an exercise that anybody can do. So no matter what your physical condition, you can do it seated, you can do it standing, whatever you feel comfortable with. Sometimes we do a little bit of a combination of both, and we try to meet everybody where they are. But Tai Chi is really an exercise that anyone can do. And for those people who like aerobics and Zumba and those more high intensity things, that was me. When I first started teaching Tai Chi, I was like, I am not going to want to do this because it's slow and graceful and those were not things I was used to. But it's actually a lot more of a workout than people think that it's going to be. It takes a lot of muscle control and you really build muscle tone while you're doing this. So it's something I think everybody should try. And it is size limited. So we have a few spots left open and we usually will let people join up until the second or third week um, if they haven't signed up as long as there's space. So anybody who's interested, if they wanna call us and sign up. We also have a demonstration video that we can send out to you if you wanna kinda of see what Tai Chi looks like. It is, it's based on a martial art. So people think it's, um, you know, when you hear that, maybe it's like karate or judo or something. It's a little bit different. And it's not something that a lot of people are familiar with. So we're glad to kind of show you, let you see some of the videos, let you come and try out the class. But I think it's something that most people would really enjoy. And it's very, very beneficial. And I think as, as we get older, we are more fearful of falling. Yes. And so anything we can do to prevent ourselves mm -hmm. from falling. It it's is, and we focus a lot on being aware of where you are in space and time and not being in such a hurry and focusing on your steps and how you place your foot and working on those balance pieces that really impact your your quality of life mm -hmm. so that you aren't so afraid to fall and you know how to, to, to recover and, and know how to kind of maintain your balance throughout that. Tai Chi is going to be in person, but not everything you're doing is in person. Uh, not everything is in person. And Tai Chi, for this point, we, we've actually, a lot of our classes are hybrid, as we call mm -hmm. them, and we do in person and, and virtual. But Tai Chi doesn't work quite as well that way for the falls and arthritis program. So it is only in person, but we are looking for people who are interested in adding a virtual one of those as well. But we do have a lot of virtual opportunities that we have continued. Oh, so our caregiver outreach and education group meets the first Wednesday of every month at one o'clock via Zoom right now. Um, that may at some point go back in person, but um, each month we have a different topic, a different speaker. For January, we're going to be talking about some caregiving tips for stepping into the new year and maybe making a, a plan to make your caregiving year successful and things that you can do. Because caregivers, we all know, forget to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't take care of the person that you are supposed to care for if you can't take care of yourself. So we want to focus on giving caregivers those resources and doing that. 
We still do our Zoom coffee chats once a month, and we're going to do something kind of fun in January. Um, we have we had just a conversation that started with us talking about some Appalachian phrases and sayings, and I think I said something that somebody was like, "What are you? What are you saying? You're speaking a different language." And so we're going to do a Zoom coffee chat, and we're going to talk about some of those traditional Appalachian words, phrases, sayings, maybe where they come from, some interesting little tidbits, and hope to hear from people some maybe things that their grandmother said or some things that their family member said or even if you're not if they weren't from Appalachia maybe some other areas of the country some some sayings and phrases that come in just to kind of just something fun a little bit lighthearted. Um, I really really enjoy research and that kind of mm -hmm. thing I love the Appalachian dialect and I love to learn about things so we thought well maybe this will just be something fun for us to do our exercise classes, um, we do have our hybrid classes, um, our senior cardio, senior strength, Thera Fitness, Balance Builders, and our Thursday night Tai Chi and Qigong class are all in person and virtual. So we have opportunities for you to exercise every day of the week. Without leaving your home. Without leaving your home. So you can do it in person. You can do it that. And then for those of you who don't do Zoom or don't do the computer, we have phone bingo. You don't have to have any special technology. You can call in. You can play bingo over the phone. We send you your bingo cards. You yell out when you have bingo. And we can send you your prizes or you can have somebody pick those up for you. So it's a lot of fun, different ways. You don't have to leave. You don't have to get dressed. When you do the Zoom classes, you don't even have to turn on your camera if you don't want to. So we don't, we don't know where you are or what you're doing. So um, we have people join us now from all over the place. I've had people on vacation at the beach or visiting family. I've had people that live in other states that have found some of our classes and want to join us through Zoom. So we're, we're just there and you can join us from anywhere, any way you choose. A great way to participate. And this is something I don't think you've done before. If you've done it, it's been more we informal. We just started, and it was kind of informal, but we have said it. And this is hanging out with Casey and Kathy. We have started pet therapy. Um, Casey is our pet therapy dog. She comes to visit twice a month and stays for about an hour. And that is actually going to be Wednesday, January the 5th at 11 and Wednesday, January 19th at 1. And you can just come out and pet and visit with both of them. We are in love with Casey and Kathy both because anybody, I mean, dogs just brighten my day anyway. I don't know about everybody else's, but they really do mine. And we have some people that just come in to visit, um, kind of hear her story and meet with them. And she loves to be petted and loves to visit with people. So something just kind of fun to do. You can just hang out in the lobby, talk to Kathy, pet the dog, have a good time. Um, we've really enjoyed it. She's been a couple of times now, and so we're going to put her on our schedule as a regular occurrence. So come by and meet them and spend some time with them. And dogs have a way of loving you like nothing no else. else. That's, That's right. right. There is no nothing that understands unconditional love more than a dog, I think. so. Um, of course, I'm an animal lover, so... But I think, I think everybody... You can't see Casey's sweet face without fallen in love with her so so stop by and see Casey you also have craft corner Friday finds craft corner tell me what that is <laughs> so every year prior to 2020 we had a craft bazaar and people would come and set up a table and sell their beautiful handmade craft ornaments jewelry crocheted items, just all, all these things. And we haven't been able to do that because of the crowds and the size restrictions. So we tried to come up with something we could do. Um, and we actually have had this through December. We were able to do it. And each week, a different one of our crafting participants signs up and they come and they set up in the lobby and they sell whatever their finds are that they have. So we've had jewelry, we have had crocheted items, homemade soaps, um, and in January, on January the 7th, Linda Watson's going to be selling her handmade jewelry. I have tons of Linda's jewelry. She makes beautiful jewelry, and it's extremely reasonably priced. I think I have some of Linda's jewelry. Audrey Jensen is going to be there on the 14th selling her crocheted items. I have several of those, too. She makes just some beautiful, beautiful things. 
And on the 21st, we're gonna have um, a variety of things with some homemade soaps, jewelry, and some knitted hats. And then we still have one Friday that's open in January if anybody's interested in coming by to sell their things. Um, there's no fee. The sellers don't have to pay a fee to come. They just come and set up in the, in the lobby and they get that from 8.15 to 12.30 to sell their goods and people come by and see. So if you're interested, come by and shop or if you wanna set up a table, call us and let us know and we can work you in the schedule. It sounds like fun. Sounds it's like a fun lot of and it's fun. a way for some of our, our really, really talented participants to, to sell their, their goods. Um, we can do it in a fairly safe manner these mm -hmm. days. That's always something we have to look at. Um, I did most of my Christmas shopping at the Senior Center, so it was it was really a lot of fun, and we got a lot of really unique, wonderful, handmade items. So. And Via Health comes every month. Every month. Every and month. For years, come. actually. And it's still, it, it, no matter how many times you've been to one of their programs, they just get better and better and better. And sometimes the topics repeat, sometimes they're brand new topics, but January is actually one of the most popular topics and they're going to be there on January 7th the 10th. They're always on the first Friday unless that's a holiday um, and they're going to talk about hoarding. Oh. So the topic is I'm covered up what you need to know about hoarding and supporting people with obsessions and compulsions and it's always one of our most popular topics. Um, it's one of the most fascinating things that we talk about. Um, that is free and it's open to anybody in the community. You don't have to be a senior. You don't have to be a member of the senior center. It's open to anyone who wants to attend. If you need CEUs, if you work in, in an industry that you need CEUs, they offer those as well. And it's a really, really good topic. Um, their programs are sensational. They have fantastic information. Um, they're wonderful presenters and I some of these some of these I've sat through the same training four or five times and I always learn something new every time so we're always grateful to have them they're also um, they do these programs virtually as well and anybody who can't attend that day we can get you a virtual schedule if you want to pick up one of those at a different day and I think hoarding on a surface level we think well why don't we just go in and clean up? But mm -hmm. it's not that simple. It's not because they have an attachment to those those items, and it's a it, it is a disorder that involves a lot of work and working with those people to kind of address those issues. And it's not it really isn't a situation where you can just say you need to go in and you need to clean up because they're not they're not able to do that. And a lot of times that creates a lot of tension and a lot of distress on family members and the person themselves. So they'll talk to ways about working with that situation, about helping with that situation and dealing with some of those underlying reasons that people are hoarding. It's a very, very interesting Very topic. interesting. Another important topic, and I feel like we mention this every month, <laughs> but I mean, it's something that people always need to yep. know about, and that's Medicare. Yes, and so we can never not talk about Medicare. I don't think there'll ever be a time I come and don't talk about <laughs> Medicare, because it's so important. Um, and it's so complicated. People have so much that they, they need help with or don't understand, and that's what we're there for. We do a Medicare 101 workshop. We haven't had one of those in several months because we don't do them during open enrollment, which is just our busiest, busiest time. So we're gonna be having one of those on Monday, January the 10th at 5.30. So if you are getting ready to retire, um, we recommend if you're planning to retire or turning 65 in the next year that you actually look at this workshop that far ahead so that you'll understand when those things are coming in the mail, what you're getting, or when you see those commercials on TV, what they're, what they're actually advertising, what they're talking about. And we can give you a lot of information on what you need to do and when you need to do it because everybody thinks I have to do this right now. And, and there's timelines and deadlines and you can only do certain things so early and you can't wait too long. So we can help you figure out those timelines of when you need to do all that. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we are always there. We have our SHIP counselors, which is the Senior Health Insurance Information Program, who are there, at least one of us, almost every day, who can answer questions about Medicare, who can help you if you're having issues with your plan, if you're having issues with your prescription drug plan. January 1st through March 31st is actually the Medicare Advantage Plan open enrollment. So if you're already on an Advantage Plan and you did not come and see us during the regular open enrollment, you still have another chance that you can make some changes to your plan. So if you need to check on that, make sure you have what you need. There's some for Advantage plans, some things we can still do for the next three months. If you are um, 
eligible for any type of extra help. We can make changes throughout the year for you if you need to make changes. We can also help if you think you might be eligible for extra help or want to know about reducing those prescription costs. We can help you determine if you might be eligible for some of those programs and do those applications. And we can do that anytime throughout the year. So basically, if you have questions about Medicare, call the Senior Center. Call the Senior Center. Uh, because I have a feeling that when my time comes, if Medicare is still around, I, I will be just calling them to say, <laughs> help me get started because I don't handle all these insurance things so well sometimes. It really is sometimes the best thing just to get an outside perspective because you, you start to get so many things in the mail and you see so many things on TV and, and everybody tells you, you got to do this and you have to do that. And if you don't do this, you, this will happen. And, and everybody's situation is different. One of the things I tell people when I teach the Medicare 101 class is everyone's situation is different. So what is best for you? What decisions you need to make for your Medicare and what decisions your spouse needs to make for Medicare may not be the same. They may be a different scenario for both, both mm -hmm. of you living in the same household. It still may be a different option. And so just because your neighbor or your friend or your relative made this decision or signed up for this plan, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best plan for you. It might be, but what we do is look at those plans. Um, we provide unbiased information. We don't get anything from any company. We provide this program through a grant that's given to us through the Department of Insurance in North Carolina. So we are not affiliated with any particular insurance company. We don't, we're not influenced by what decisions you make. Our goal is just to help you make the best decision for you. And it can have a huge financial impact for you picking the right plan and making sure you get the best coverage on your medications. And we just look at your situation and decide which of those plans is going to meet your needs and help you. And that's, that's what we try to do. Another thing that I think is also very important, important is taking care of yourself and you're doing blood pressure screenings, which is one way to help monitor your blood pressure. We do. We, we actually have done blood pressure screenings for a long time, but obviously like everything else, they got put on hold during the pandemic. And during the pandemic, we were actually able to, to create a partnership with the community paramedics program. And we work very closely with, um, the Caldwell County EMS and that community paramedics program, which is just fantastic and wonderful. And they are volunteered to come once a month and check blood pressures. So it's free. Um, it's being done by trained personnel. So mm -hmm. you can have them come and do that. We do it on the second Tuesday of every month from 1.30 to 2. You just walk in and sit down and they'll check your blood pressure. There's usually two or three of them there and it doesn't take very long. And you know, if there's anything they see that's an indication of something you might need to address, they'll give you that information and tell you what you need to do. But it's a good thing to always check on it. Um, we have a class at 1.30 on Tuesday, so you can come get your blood pressure checked and then go to the exercise class. Do you got, I mean, <laughs> that's the ultimate in being healthy right there. That's so. right. Again, so many classes that you offer are things that all adults need. Absolutely. And this is one of them, the Living Wheels class. Yes. Tell us so about that. We partner with Amorum to offer advanced care planning workshops. So the forms that we, we discuss during those classes are the Living Wheels and the healthcare power of attorneys. And staff from Amorum goes through each of those forms. They'll go through it line by line and help you fill it out, answer any questions you have. And then we offer notary services at no cost to you, um, either on site that day or you can make an appointment to come back. Because sometimes people want to talk to their family and, and you don't have to do it right at that time, but we'll do an appointment for you to come back. A lot of people um, go to attorneys to get this. You don't have to do that. Um, we have volunteer attorneys that come and go over the forms with hospice and do those sort of things. Um, Houston Groom did it for years and years and years with us at the Senior Center. He was one of our best volunteers. So he, um, he worked on this and believed very strongly in helping people with these. And we do too. We want to make sure that people have access to these documents. They're very important documents for you to have and for your family to have. So we have um, the staff that, that comes over from Memorum. They go through this. We do it every month. So if you can't come on the second, or second Thursday of January, it'll be there in February, March, April. We, we do it every month. 
We do have a recorded version of an online session. If you want to watch the, the program because you can't come in person, we can arrange that as well. But it's really important for you to come out to fill out. It's not required that you are a member of the Senior Center to be there. It's open to anyone, any age. You are welcome to come and bring your whole family to do them if you want to, because it is something, once you need a power of attorney or you need a living will, it is typically too late to fill it out. So we encourage everyone to get those filled out, to update those. You may want to look at it if you did a, a healthcare power of attorney 10 years ago and your healthcare power of attorneys moved and maybe live somewhere out of state is harder to reach or something needs to be changed, you can make amendments to that. You can do a new one, tear up the old one, and we can help you with all those things. Again, very important to do. Yes. But while you offer the serious things, you also offer the fun things. Yes. So this is the this is one of the number one things people have asked for. You know, we do these surveys and we do these um, what we're going to talk about in a minute. But dessert with the director, we do all these places for you to give your feedback and tell us what you want. You can come in and tell us. We've had suggestion boxes and the surveys. People just want a social time where they can just hang out, gather with friends, do something fun. Um, We've done a lot of different things. This time we're going to try it a little different. We've tried doing Pictionary and other things, which is so much fun. So if you see Pictionary on our schedule, you need to come. But um, on January the 14th from 10 to 12, we're just going to have our senior social and games. So we'll have our big room set up for if you want to come and play cards if you with your friends, if you want to come and play chess or checkers. We'll have several different options that we have. Or you can bring your own game. Just going to be a time to socialize, hang out, maybe meet some people. Uh, one of the things we heard is there's several people that are actually signed up to come to this who moved to this area during the pandemic and they haven't been able to really get out and socialize and meet people. So they want to be able to just kind of meet some people. And that's what we're, what we're going to do. And I think the socialization, especially after COVID, not that we're completely <laughs> post COVID at this point, but after the past two mm -hmm. years, people have been so isolated. Having that socialization seems so important now. It is important. And that's one of the things we really focus on at the Senior Center. And even just a few weeks ago at one of our craft corners, we had a person that was there who met another person that came in just to shop. And they found out they were born and raised in almost the same area in another state. And they exchanged phone numbers and they decided they were going to go to lunch and they both signed up to do several programs at the senior center together. So, you know, we really want to encourage, you know, friendships and meeting people and socializing and doing those things. So we're just going to have a time. We're going to try to make that a regular occurrence where you just have a time that you can come in if you want to play cards, if you want to play a game, if you want to just sit back and talk to people, several different things going on that you can just relax and have a good time. Sounds like fun. And you give people an opportunity to share ideas of yes. things they want to do. And we follow through with those to the extent possible. Sometimes we've had some requests that we can't quite follow through with, but we do. And we do that. One of the ways we do that is with dessert with the director. We've, we've done this, I don't know how many times now, but um, we just have people come in. You get to sit down with the staff. I'm always there. Some of the other staff is there. And you, you tell us what you want out of your senior center, which is really, really important because it's not my senior center it's the community senior center and we want people to tell us what they want what they enjoy what they don't like that's okay too you're welcome to tell us you did this event and we thought this was terrible because we want to hear from you and if you aren't happy with something we want to change it and if you want us to do something else we want to try it and a lot of our really good programs have come from feedback from these things and just like the senior social that came from people saying this is what we want to do so we're we're trying to implement those things the Tai Chi class, the Tai Chi class in the evening, all of those things came from people saying, I want to do something a little different. You know, we heard people say, well, I keep my grandkids during the day and it's hard for me to come to something during the day. I'd like to have something later in the day. So that's why we started trying to, to rearrange things and do some different things. So we want to hear from you. And that's Tuesday, January 18th at 10. We do ask people to sign up for that just so we have enough dessert. So. That's very important. It is very important. We don't want to run out of dessert. You, you must have food. That, that is important. <laughs> Something that I believe started during COVID, during the period of isolation, as I would like to call it, 
that you started doing virtually was your travel travel tuesday still one of our most popular virtual things that we do we have visited countless locations now i actually counted up one time and I can't remember how many hundreds of places we had been now. Um, but we do take these virtual trips, and we decided to um, do one in person. And we actually had this already scheduled and had to reschedule, which is, again, something we that comes up these days, and we have to work with it. But Vince Bartlemy is going to come, and he's going to talk to us about his adventures in Thailand. And share some photos and some stories, things with us. And we're really excited about that. January 20th at three o'clock. So we encourage everybody to come out and learn a little bit about Thailand, the land of smiles. I learned that just from setting up the program. I did not know it was called that. Um, And Vince is gonna come out and talk to us. And for those people who may know Vince, um, he works with Brookdale Senior Living, but he also is part of ACAP and some other caregiver programs and is very involved in the community. He serves on the Council on Aging and he is just an all-around really genuinely wonderful person and he will be fun just to hear him talk no matter what the topic is. So I think people will really enjoy that. Yes. I'm an acquaintance (laughs) with Vince and I will tell you that he is entertaining just to say hello to. So even if you don't care anything about Thailand, it will be a fun program just for you to come and and do with us. Okay, we have something from the Heritage Museum, which I know you're starting to do Mm -hmm. about once a month. What we are actually doing, um, we have done a monthly program with the Heritage Museum for the last several months, and we rotate back and forth. Sometimes these are done at the museum, and sometimes they're at the Senior Center. So um, January 21st at 10 o'clock. Cindy will be at the Senior Center, and and she's going to talk about some of those Depression-era programs and how they affected Caldwell County. And so some of those, like CCC programs, CCC camp programs, and some other things and the impact that they had in this area and how that related to some of the Caldwell County history. Awesome. That would be a fun program to watch because I know that... um, before the flooding, mm-hmm. there was a lot going on at Mortimer with yeah. these type programs. So yeah, and she's really she's going to talk a lot about the things that were going on in that era and how things changed and what all they did and probably some things I don't even know. So I'm always I always try not to find out too much information before she does them, so I can go to the program and learn something. <laughs> Um, but I always I enjoy learning the history of where I'm from, where I live. So we thought that might be a good thing for people. And, and that's something that was, again, another topic that came up in one of our um, surveys and our dessert with the directors was learning some local history programs and what better place to get that from our local history museum. Local history museum. And if you haven't been to our local history museum, you should go and visit and see all the things that they have. They have some really good stuff. And we, like I said, we've done several programs there and at the Senior Center, and we're kind of go back and forth and keep trying to come up with some additional topics. And so contact information for the Senior Center, we talk about signing up and and reaching out to the Senior Center. How do people do that? So there are all kinds of ways you can do that. The easiest way, you can call us at 758-2883. We have somebody there to answer the phone, direct you to the person that can help you if you need assistance, if you need information and assistance or Medicare assistance, or if you just want to sign up for a program, give you some information. You can get on our mailing list if you call us. We can put you on our mailing list for our newsletter or our emails, either one. We can do those on paper or we can do that through email. We uh, follow us on Facebook. That's the quickest way to get information. We have a lot of our stuff that's going on on Facebook. We are doing some of these programs might be Facebook Live. If you're not able to to attend, we may do some of that as well. Um, we try to we try to offer something for everybody. So we have a YouTube channel. So we record a lot of our programs and put those on our YouTube channel. So you can watch those there, and you can come and see us. That's the most important thing. We're on Penton Avenue. We're open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 8 to 4. Thursdays, we are open until 8 to 7. So we're open after work. So no longer is working an excuse for not coming to see us. And all of our, we have a class at 5.30 on Thursdays, the Tai Chi and Qigong with Ellen Kreider. But our pool table is open and brand newly recovered. So we have a newly covered pool table. Our exercise room is open. 
you can come and do that. Our computer lab is open. You can come and use those. You can come and just hang out. Our puzzle library, our book library, all those things are there for people to come and borrow puzzles or books or just come and visit. And I know this question seems crazy on the day of this taping when it's so warm, <laughs> but we're going into January. What is your snow policy? <laughs> Our snow policies are tricky, trickier these days. Uh, we've always been closed when the schools are closed. Right. So if the cool, if the Caldwell County schools are closed or delayed, then we are closed or delayed. But with the implementation of virtual learning, that changed things a little bit. So we always post our closing and delays on Facebook. They're also on our outgoing message at the Senior Center. So if, um, if you need to call and check to see if we're open or closed, it'll always be on there. Typically, in most instances, if the schools have switched to virtual for weather, we will most likely be closed or delayed, depending on the circumstances. Um, but it will always be on Facebook and it'll always be on our phone. So that's the quickest way. And if the schools are closed, we're always closed. So just keep that in mind. I know that we've had some warm days recently, <laughs> but I'm not trusting that to hold out through yeah, the I entire think, month. Uh, January might be pretty cold, and you know, in North Carolina, sometimes March is pretty bad. We That's see true. we see some weather all the way into March, so we do try to keep that posted. Um, like I said, if you're on Facebook, if you do social media. Facebook is the first place that we post most everything because we can do that instantly. Mm -hmm. it, it, it takes just a few seconds and any of us can do it from our phones wherever we're at. Um, but we do change those outgoing voicemail messages as well. And then we try to send out emails and things to people that are on our email listserv. But if you're not on those um, social media sites, things like that, then the best way to do is call and see or watch the news and look for whatever the Cobble County School System is doing. Okay. April, thank you for joining us, and thank you for all that the Senior Center is doing for our community. Thank you for having us. And thank you for watching Caldwell County Today. Mm -hmm.